one day i go to office and right on top of the pile i see a screenplay of inglorious bastards oh and it had a cover page which was hand written by tarantino i saw that i was like holy shit i stuffed the script into my pants i xeroxed wow <laughs> i xeroxed and made like some six copies so ye jo che copies lay don mein se aapke us bachche ko hi hame dene ke liye ek hai i was given a very interesting book uh, by mani sir it's called mani sir's name sticker written <laughs> so he gave it to me and he said read it you like it and i said thank you so much sir. and uh, as i was walking away he said i want it back and i said, <laughs> <laughs> I said yeah yeah sure sure i'll give it back I never gave it back it's still with me so i don't know whether i should talk about it but um fuck it so hey hey what's up guys today our episode is with the filmmaker bijoy nambiar bijoy nambiar is one of the most unique voices in indian film industry and he has made some amazing films like shaitan wazir tash bijoy nambiar also works very closely with the filmmaker mani ratnam हमें इनसे बात करके बहुत ज़्यादा मज़ा आया बिकॉज वी गॉट वेरी डीप इन टू म्यूज़िक फिल्म एड्स वॉट नॉट एंड बहुत ज़्यादा वाइब मैच करी थी हम सब की ये कन्वर्जेशन करते हुए एंड आई होप आपको भी उतना ही मज़ा आया ये एपिसोड देख के जितना हमें रिकॉर्ड करते टाइम आया था दिस वीडियो इज ब्रॉट यू बाई मूवी विच इज अटेड स्ट्रीमिंग सर्विस शोइंग एक्सेप्शनल फिल्म फ्राम अराउंड द ग्लोब आपको मूवी और मूवी गो की एक साल की सब्सक्रिप्शन मिल जाएगी जस्ट फॉर टू फोर नाइन नाइन इफ यू क्लिक ऑन द लिंक इन डिस्क्रिप्शन विच इज मूवी डॉट कॉम स्लैश चलचित्र टॉक्स सो येस लेट्स जम्प राइट इन साइड द कन्वर्जेशन वी हैड विद बिजॉय नाम वी आर Hi Bijoy sir how are you welcome to Chalchitra Talks thank you so much for having me over sir we are today going to take a lot of recommendations from you in regard to what you read what you watch the kind of music you are into so are you ready i'm actually very very uh, uh, yeah, in about sharing my 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 music or some of the movies also movies i don't mind sharing but music i'm very very particular about Uh, whether I should share or not. So I will share the general lists. I will not share the main lists. <laughs> Why not the main lists? I like to keep my music very like uh, dear to myself. I'm pretty really mm-hmm. selfish by that. For instance, right now, currently, some of the music that I'm listening to is a lot to do with what I'm going to be doing for my film and everything. So then, mm-hmm. I'm amazing. Uh, yeah. Guarded about that. Mm-hmm. I I once had a Facebook group of four people and I had called it selfish music discoveries things <laughs> which you don't want to share with anyone but just a couple of friends yeah <laughs> yeah just about yes <laughs> and uh, because I really relate to it because we both are also from direction background and one of my favorite filmmakers is John Mark Valley so उनको देख के मेरे को पहली बार ऐसे validation मिली थी He was was one of those people that first I music select and then I make a picture. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. So is it a thing that like yeah, like do you, have you ever done it? You know, first let me find the music, then comes everything else. A lot of times. In fact, I have this one uh, composer friend. I, I bother him so much, saying that I need a theme. Like before I start the film, I I need ah. you to compose the theme for the film. So mm-hmm. every last three four films, he's always. given me that one track that theme kind of binds it together from so i need that piece of music because that kind of drives me into more and more into the film or of what kind he's the constant collaborator with me since david i think so mm-hmm. he always composes the theme for me and uh, uh, that i use that to kind of jump uh, further and further into the film amazing so what kind of genres are you most into oh i i'm very genre agnostic so i am not at all uh, tied into any particular kind of music my sister bindu is a professional classical singer so growing up i've always heard a lot of classical music courtesy her you know so i i always had an inclination towards indian classical and then i guess you know other music started filtering in through 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 the growing up years like i know so many of my friends were hardcore uh, rock fans they used to be this to only rock bands you no know, and they used to look down upon pop stuff but i used right. to both i used to rock i used to pop i used to death metal i used to listen to everything so uh, I, until this date i have kind of managed to keep that interest alive though i guess deep down uh, indian classical anything to do with uh, carnatic music anything to do with 
fusion uh, uh, Western and, and 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 Indian classical. I, I I gravitate more towards that. In fact, you can find that a lot in my work also. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. I I always try to marry that a lot. But yeah, I, I listen to all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Got it. So uh, before I take specific names from you in regard to artists and songs, do you have any? uh memory of like attending a concert an offline event in regard to a music um uh experience that you want to talk about Ki, hey i saw this person online and it's still one of the most memorable concert experiences of my life i actually not been to many concerts uh but the few that i've gone to uh that really you know uh stay out like not stay there for me is one is definitely Rahman sir. I, I've attended most of Rahman sir's concerts also because I love his music so much. So to see him perform live is, is, a, is, is a joy that can't compare to anything. So Rahman sir's concerts and of course uh, the U2 concert that I went to, uh, which was in Bombay. Mm -hmm. And those two really stick out to me. Those, those two were like some, uh, I mean, uh, they, 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 that was an experience by itself. Like I would not uh, trade it for anything else. If given a choice, I would love to relive those. Uh, concerts all over again. In fact, whenever Ramans is performing, like there's a concert, I still make it a point to try and uh, go and attend whenever possible. Okay, nice. And like you were mentioning, there are some uh, names that you would not want to share with us in, in the realm yeah. of music, <laughs> but like which are the ones you are comfortable sharing with us? From the Indian albums, Sushin Sham's uh, Romancham. There's a soundtrack called Romancham, which has got two banger tracks, which really lifted the film also. It's part of a film called Romancham. And Sushin Sham, uh, who did Kumblangi Nights in my life, uh, right. phenomenal music director. I've been listening to uh, the Varus soundtrack, which is again an uh, active mm -hmm. Vijay soundtrack of right. Varus, which had again two tracks, which uh, again completely, you know, uh, it's been what, almost two months since the movie release, but I've been I've been hooked to those tracks. So these are the things I've been constantly playing in a loop, I guess. So I guess that's that's fresh. Uh, and uh, Ramansa's new album has come out, so I've been tripping on that. Uh, nice. Pantata. And of course, a, a song from the film that I worked on, PS2, uh, is just mm -hmm. released day for yesterday. So that's uh, again Ramansa's. Uh, so that is dear to me for for many reasons. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's those are the songs that I've been. Kind of tripping on but apart from that um the other stuff i've been listening to is uh, i have this very dear friend of mine called dhruv through vishwanath uh, mm -hmm. he does some very interesting music so i've been privy to some of his unreleased tracks which i've been uh, listening to a lot and of course his uh, catalog is something i i keep uh revisiting aditya rao I've been listening to a lot of Aditya Rao's uh, plays. I know Aditya from a long time, but then Aditya's uh, uh, release tracks, which I had not, I had not heard them before. So Aditya Rao's tracks, I've been listening to. He he, he has done some very interesting music, and um, uh, of course, Insta Reels, you know, they keep dragging you to different different pieces <laughs> of music, and they're there only for a minute, right? But I, I keep looking. I'm one of those <laughs> old generation guys. So I, I keep thinking that it's part of a song, but then I realize it's not. It's just made for that one minute. But I keep hunting for that <laughs> tracks. So a couple of tracks from uh, from Insta, I keep looking for. And there was this one track, which is just outstanding. I think it's called Unak Nani. That's the name of the track, Unak Nani. I am one of the actors in my film. I had made a reel on it and I really liked the track a lot. And it was okay. mixed with one of Air Rahman's track from Karnatil Mutamita. I think it was mixed mm -hmm. with that. That um, I really, really liked. Uh, that song was just so nicely done. On its own, the song was really good. And then the, the remix with Rahman's track was like one lethal combination. That was really nice. And then, of course, um, I have my uh, regulars uh, that, that is Prashant is. Uh, my constant collaborator right from Shaitande. So I love Prashant's music. Prashant's music for me is like Ramansa's music. It's it's timeless. I keep going back to it again and again. From international music, um I've been listening to a lot of soundtracks, mainly because I'm I, I think I'm nice. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to oh I've just finished shooting something. So I'm also trying to collect scores, references and everything. Nice. So I've been a lot of scores. Um and one of those scores that I really like again every time I forget the name of the film. <laughs> Um, one was of course Beale Street Could Talk. That's one mm. I really like. I've been a very avid soundtrack uh, nice. for a long time. I'm talking about from, from time in college. 
I used to keep collecting soundtracks of films. I was very fascinated about soundtracks. So, um, and at that time, I remember they used to always release two albums of a film. One album right. used to be all the songs from the yeah. film, and one album used to be just the score. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I figured that out after I spent a bomb collecting soundtracks. Then I realized, oh shit! <laughs> uh, at that time, you know, you're really saving money. One, once a month, you can buy one album. You know? So I used to be so particular about which album, and you can't really listen to it and buy it that time. You have to just buy it and then mm-hmm. listen to it. I'm talking about traveling to Rhythm House and buying right. stuff. So I used to really collect a lot of soundtracks, and um, some some soundtracks are just. outstanding danny boyle soundtracks used to be uh, just epic you know his collection of songs used to be just epic i remember right from train spotting to a lifeless ordinary lifeless ordinary has got some outstanding tracks it's it's still nice. one of my top favorite uh, uh albums the movies is you know works kind of it just came and went and uh, it was it didn't make that much of an impact the soundtrack is unbelievable uh, so i i used to love the uh, lifeless ordinary soundtrack i used to love forces of nature there's a ben affleck mm. for Of that soundtrack, these are some old soundtracks I used to collect. And from right. some recent movies, of course, Hans Zimmer's all of Hans Zimmer's stuff. And uh, again, I I listened to them like on a loop. Recently, Ludwig Erzinn's uh, Tenet soundtrack I really liked. It was oh. such an interesting uh, marriage of um, this grand uh, pieces mixed with electronic music. I, right. I, I found it very very uh, distinctive and interesting. So yeah. Um, yeah, there are some of the soundtracks I, I I keep listening to. Other artists I listen to is I I, I like is Chet Faker. I like nice. Chet Faker, I like Chet Faker a lot. Of course, Radiohead is again a go-to, constant go-to. Okay, I I have this thing. I don't know if I should mention it, but when I spoke to you earlier about how I don't like sharing my music, there's something else about music. It can be some songs. It can be some um, piece of a score from a film. Uh, There are some very limited number of songs and pieces of music, which I consider sacred. Very I nice. Sacred. The impact that it had on me when I heard them for the first time. It it's for me it was so like you know uh, moving and profound that I I I hate diluting it, so I don't listen to it. I I like it so much that I don't wow. listen to it. I love it so much, so so I I I in my in my little way I respect it so much that I don't want to dilute the impact that it had on me. So. I must have just heard them maybe even a handful of times, but I don't listen to them. I know of them. I know the video. I have it, but I'll never visit it. I I visit wow. it only and only on a very special occasion or when when it it's almost like that that uh, some some people. I'm not an alcoholic, but some people have this one bottle that they keep yeah. on the same occasions. So for me, music and some movies are also like that. I mm-hmm. I save them for an occasion, and most of the times that occasion has never come. So I've actually not heard them. I've not heard that those songs. I've not heard those pieces of music in a long time. But I know what it made me feel when I heard them. So I I like to keep it like that. And those I'll not share. Those I don't yeah. <laughs> share. But there are there are some definitely some pieces yeah. of music like radio because I mentioned radio. There is definitely there's one song of radio which uh, and so when it plays some when it randomly plays somewhere I run away. I either tell them to shut it down or I run away. I don't want to. Oh, listen. this is <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> You know, we were doing an episode with like only two days back. We did an episode with Abhishek Chabe, and oh, okay. uh, he also did a segment on radio. And I think his favorite album is Kid A, and like oh. he, yeah. So he was talking like mm-hmm. a lot about Kid A, and like it was beautiful. <laughs> so Probably, but, uh, he's one of those rare filmmakers I feel that like, who's managed to survive and and do and come out with such a distinctive voice his his yeah. voice the filmmaker is so strong i find his work very very inspiring and i reach out to him almost every time whenever whenever uh, he puts out something i absolutely adore his work and i i'm a huge huge fan of chobi amazing so i want to talk a little more about soundtracks i have a couple of questions mm-hmm. some are very specific have you heard the soundtrack of phantom thread i yeah, love of course, I, of course, i love it i love it i love it, I love it. Uh, and okay. the other one the other the one is almost like a character in the film yes oh, yes a... yeah the other one that i particularly love is the johan johansson's arrival ah oh. yeah david pilano again he has this crazy knack for music in his film so uh, yeah yeah arrival is outstanding my i love i love the soundtrack of arrival 
Also, so we were yeah, yeah uh, we were talking about Rahman sir. So in Rang De Basanti, I have been trying to find it forever. The the soundtrack, the score which plays during the opening credits of Rang De Basanti, is it out anywhere? Like uh, like I don't know how to. When you have that like slow FPS, may you see the all the uh, posters and everything. I can even play it, but like <laughs> I, I uh, always I have been trying to find it for years, and I don't know what to like. Search for like every time I look for it. Uh, uh, Hindal, you so can I'm please. I'm part of a very secret Raman sir fans group, so I'm sure okay. they will have it. So I'll, I'll <laughs> if I get it, I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you. Oh great! So they uh, dig out all these. The, those guys managed to dig out some very interesting pieces of music uh, from Raman sir's filmography, uh, especially score, especially uh, pieces which which kind of um, uh, are not released. So they managed to find out stuff like that, which. Oh, you're okay. Some- yeah. 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 I have been dying to like because I just need to find this and and I don't know if there is a name for this. I, I got you. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and Dolly was saying something. <laughs> yeah. Um. I have many questions right now, but okay. I'll uh, start with you mentioned that you create themes for your own movies before you start working on them. Are there any uh, themes that you like, like a specific theme that you like from, let's say, different soundtracks? Oh, there are too many of them. It's almost like a, um, um, it's a moniker for a film. You know, some some of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. some of the some sounds you hear. You immediately connect with the, yeah, the, the yeah, yeah. You, know, you immediately connect with the visual. You immediately connect with the story. So it almost feels like they they are kind of there's so much synergy there that it's it's been made for that. It's it's uh, it's almost married in your head like mm-hmm. that. And, uh, uh, I I and those are the pieces that you wanna just keep uh, visiting. You know, and there are so many of them. There's so many iconic ones. Like <laughs> the other day, I was watching a video of Harrison Ford walking on the stage, and when he was walking on the stage to give an award or something, and they played the yeah, Indiana, Indiana theme music, right? Yeah. Uh, Indiana Jones music, and and he walked up to the stage, and, and the first thing he says, is, they play this goddamn music every bloody time. I walk <laughs> on the stage, they play it. I walk off the stage, they play it. You know what? The other day I was getting operated, and they were playing it in the <laughs> operating theater. Oh. <laughs> so it's it's become synonymous with, them. and there was like a huge uh, round of laughter in the audience, but. But that's what I mean. You know, some some mm. pieces of music are just uh, so iconic. Of course, there are the classics, be it the Jaws, be it the James Bond, be it Mission Impossible. Or they are the classics. Then you know, mm. the Pink Panther theme. You know that. But apart from that, I love those. I love all of those. I love the Superman theme. I love all of those. But I like the new stuff also. I like the new, new age uh, uh, music, which has a very signature uh, uh, pull to the, mm. to the to the story uh, and. Uh, that can be the 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 theme from from Mind Hunter. You know, that can be the piece of music from Better Call Saul. You know what I mean? It blends so beautifully to the story. Maybe because we have also invested so heavily into that format, yeah. and we, we are watching it on day in day out, and we get kind of so attached to it. But I I love that there is a signature uh, uh, music uh, which I can connect to. Mm-hmm. So uh, those are pieces I definitely I I, I love. I really like. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are many of them, so I can't really pick and choose yeah. one. I like weirdly. I like some jingles. I love. There, are, there mm-hmm. is a uh, like you were hunting for Rande Basandi. I was. I used to hunt for this Kinle ka jingle, which mm-hmm. I know that Vishal Bharadwaj uh, sir had composed for it. And I hunted, and I finally found it. Uh, it was called Boond Boond. It was something called Boond Boond because I remember when I heard it, it was outstanding, and I, and then yeah. I didn't hear it at all for longer time. So I hunted for it, and I found it. And it's such a beautiful uh, jingle. But again, I felt. If one ad came and went, but it's it's actually got such a soulful sound and it's such a great sound. Which is why you know even in the past, like in, I'm talking about the 80s and 90s, when there was a jingle made, everybody mm. remembered. Be it yeah, uh, Bajaj, Hamara Kal, Hamara Aaj, mm. little, you know, we used to always remember the yeah. jingle. Yeah. There were some strong melodies there, you know, really strong melodies. So, uh, and 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 they made it uh, iconic. They, they became iconic over the years. So, I like about. That. About the jingles, there is something that I've heard which I want to confirm from you that uh, for Shaitan, you wanted to use Viko Vajrajanti, the jingle for yeah, the climax. Yeah, for the longest time, we, we kept <laughs> putting the company and we kept 
try to convince them, but they were just not convinced. <laughs> I, and I even storyboarded and showed them, sent them storyboards and all that. But oh, they they wouldn't they wouldn't uh, agree to it. Then from Viko Bajanti because I used to love Viko Bajanti. Bajanti, Bajanti, Viko Bajanti. Yeah. So I used to love that, and I thought it'd be. And in the if you see the visual in the visual, the kid is playing the radio. He's playing with the he's fiddling with mm. the radio on the radio. That's what I wanted. I wanted the ad mm. to come out, but uh, it, it didn't work out. <laughs> then became yeah. luckily Kati, and luckily Kati didn't work out, and finally we got Vikram Chan. Yeah, that's also an amazing, amazing track. You know, the moment Hindal mentioned uh, uh, themes uh, and the movies related to themes, the first thing which came to my mind was Dev Chanda theme from Dev D. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, yeah, that's also yeah. It has a very particular way, like that. It makes you remind of Dev D. So yeah, this guy is such a strong uh, uh, ear for music. Damien Chazelle. Uh, mm. like, yeah, he, I mean his collaboration with that. Justin Horowitz is is just outstanding. I feel every mm-hmm. film they I feel they knock it out of the park. The 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 Ryan Gosling film. Uh, what was that? What? First Man. First, First man. man. Oh my oh, god! Amazing, amazing. The soundtrack. What a piece of music that is. The Crown. Of course, mm-hmm. the Crown. How can I forget the Crown? Mm-hmm. The Fox Hunt. Oh, it's those are like those are piece of music. I think I'll just again. Those are special. I, mm-hmm. I don't want to forget it <laughs> again. Again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, on the topic of Damon Chazelle, have you watched uh, Babylon yet? I started it, but I mm-hmm. uh, I was with a group of people who were not interested in watching it. So then okay. I didn't want to watch it like that. So I thought, mm-hmm. let me watch this it. This is such it. a nice way to decide when not to watch a film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that ruins the experience because they mm. they were constantly talking. They were constantly you know talking about other stuff, and they were not focusing on the film. And it really pisses me off when people. Don't watch a film properly. You know, I have, uh, I have had a, I have had a breakup because of this. <laughs> <laughs> rightly so, and rightly. Yeah. So. <laughs> I can't stand it in the theaters. In the theaters, when people keep picking up their phones, so people around you are constantly looking at their phones and watching the film. It really bothers me. Like, come mm-hmm. on, yeah, utna time nikal do na, dekh lo, uske baad kar lo, baad nikal lo, interval nikal lo, picture ke time mat karo. Yeah. <laughs> because after watching Mimilon, I was thinking that, you know, people talk about Nolan and Hans Zimmer being like, you know, an inseparable pair. And a lot of people don't talk about Damien Chazelle and Justin Herbert, you know, being yeah. a, a great are, pair. I think they are a yeah. match made in heaven. There, yeah. You know? Then there is also Paul Thomas Anderson and Johnny Greenwood, like yeah. Janoon and like how they've done this. Yeah. Very interesting pair. Yeah, it is so. Okay, again, again, another league by himself. Yeah, I have one last question in music. That uh, you mentioned that you are like very deeply into Indian classical music, and that's not something a lot of our guests talk about. Uh, not uh, dissing the other guests, but still, uh, because Indian classical music is something that I'm very passionate about. So, if you had to introduce someone to like Indian classical music, what artists or like what albums would you recommend? Any of uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar's albums that you wanna. Uh, visit from the past. Ravi Shankar, Bhim Sen Joshi. Of the recent lot, I think one of my favorite is Sairi Talwalkar. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think she's just unbelievably talented, and her, her, her music is just something I I I, I absolutely adore. I got her to collaborate with me on one film, so right. it was just magical to watch her perform. First from down south, I I um, I'm a, I'm a huge huge. Fan of M S Subbalakshmi, and these are the legends that that I used to in my house. It's you constantly keep playing. M S Subbalakshmi was like a like on a, mm-hmm. on a daily basis. I used to used to hear them. So this is um, these are the legends that I guess I I'm, I've been privy to. Nice. Now that like we have discussed music, I want to talk about music videos. And are there any particular music videos that have stayed with you that you really, really like? I like Roman Gavra's music videos. Yes. Uh, the My Athena guy, guy, right? Yeah, the Athena guy. Athena to abhi aaya. Wo to kab se This ad is made by Roman Gavra. I said like, yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of his work. I'm a huge fan of Hiro Murai. Hiro Murai. Oh. Talk about the kind of stuff he's done is just again, I, I think it's outstanding. You can you can actually filmmakers can watch and learn. Yeah. Their work. Because so, you mentioned Chet Faker, he has also directed a yeah, Chet Faker. He did, he did, he did gold. He did gold. The, he did gold. I have a huge list of music videos, there, but I uh, some of the makers I don't know, but 
I, 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 music videos, I, I, I used to collect the good ones and always yeah. mark them, keep it. So I have a lot of uh, music videos that I, uh, uh, like in my collection that I keep watching, rewatching, and like you said, show to people who are not seen. Yeah. <laughs> there is, there is one, <laughs> there's a music video which I show which not many people uh, can digest and watch, but it's called, uh, I think it's called Say, Say, Say. Yeah, it's called mm-hmm. Say, Say. Uh, uh, it's such a cute song. But it's such a ghastly video. It's a <laughs> very, very disturbing video, music video. But it's a beautiful song, and it's a very well-made video. But it's a, it's a supremely disturbing video to watch. It's called Say Say. I think it's called Say Say, okay. and I, I can't remember the name of the uh, artist. But it's in my list. That's uh, and there's one Russian music video which is which became very popular. Uh, um, I like it because of the the style with which it was made. Uh, you can watch it if the entire video is in reverse. So mm-hmm. it ah. plays back in reverse, but you can watch it. Some, so some fans have put it back the other way also. So you can watch it mm. both and it's still work. It's quite cool. And of course, uh, from here, I think 90s uh, were our era of music videos, Indian mm. music videos. So we used to do some really killer music videos at that time. Yeah. So uh, that I, 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 I still watch and rewatch. Uh, nice. Just for fun. So there are some really cool music videos. When the Baba Segal ka music video, uh, Dil Darke was an iconic yeah. video for its time. It was very yeah. cool for its time. So that and all the remix videos, Bali, uh, Bali Sagu's music Bali videos. Sagu. I, I remember all those. And I, I used to love watching them. In fact, my, my wife was, uh, she featured in a very uh, famous music video, Band of Boys. Uh, oh. uh, video called Gori, I think it's called Gori. Oh. Uh, yeah, so she was part of that music video. So. <laughs> uh, that's also part yeah. of my life. Whenever I want to embarrass her, I keep playing. <laughs> nice. So, which are which are some of your favorite ads? Do you have any ad recommendations? Oh wow! I'm a huge, huge fan of this ad filmmaker called Ayapa. Yes. So okay. Ayapa is again. Uh, um, he's a He's a filmmaker, like you now. In fact, he just started uh, doing narrative. He just started. Uh, he he did one story in Unpaused, uh, uh-huh. one of the best stories in that in the season two. I think that was his first uh, material that's out there as a narrative. But as a ad filmmaker, I have a separate collection of Ayapa's ad films. <laughs> he, so so good, and his collaborators, people he collaborates with, are so good. Uh, that it just frustrates me. It angers me when I watch his stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what did he do, sir? He is uh, the man behind all the credits. All the credits are him. Yeah. Ah. Uh, uh, just you want to see Ayapa in like his full glory. Watch uh, the new uh, Steel of Oman ad that he did. Okay. That's like a lesson in filmmaking. You watch Sila Uman ad, it's, it's, it's almost like uh, uh, aspiring filmmakers can watch and learn from it. I got to learn so much when I watched that. Yeah, so yeah. his ads are just outstanding. Credit ads, though, I think he's just having fun and you can see that he's having fun. <laughs> <laughs> but they also became so popular. They were so effective. Yeah. They were so worked out. You know, so they worked so well. So, yeah, Ayapa's ad films, I think I would just read all of his ad films. He did one for the Hindu. Couple of years back, four years back, or something, he did one for the Hindu Bangalore. Hindu Bangalore. Mm-hmm. You have to watch it purely for his narrative yeah. style. The way he, yeah. he he told the story of what that film was trying yeah. to say and how he told it. It's, yeah. it's, I, I know what it would have been on paper, but uh, you know how a filmmaker takes that and 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 kind of just lifts it up and, and gives you an experience. So that's again. Uh, Great learning. Have you seen the Spike Jones ad for HomePod, the Apple? Oh yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. yeah, it's um, the yeah. making is also equally good. Yeah, yeah. the beat exactly the making itself is another like a it's a great. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's this uh, French channel called Canal Plus. It's a movies uh, showcasing channel over there, and they have some of the like funniest and most cinematic ads if you are ever watching them. There's this one ad where it's called The Bear where there's a grizzly bear who is directing a war movie and it's like a behind the scenes oh. uh, making of where the bear is talking to camera that I'm I'm a very great uh, director I am very nice to the crew cut to him yelling at the crew and it's oh. it's, it's 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 a hilarious ad so Kanal Plus is something that I think uh, you I really like. it up yeah. 
Amazing. So now that we have discussed music videos and ads, like can we now talk about TV shows? Recently, of course, like the whole world, I was I was also hooked on to The Last of Us. Nice. And I was really upset when it got over. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not a, a video game person, so I, I've not played the game. Weirdly, I thought that it's it's an offshoot of The Walking Dead or the last. I thought maybe it is part of that world, mm-hmm. but it's not. I mean, it was also. Yeah. It was just outstanding. I loved. How did you like the episode three of Last of Us, the the one where they show the romantic Frank. story? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I have a very, I don't know if I'm, I, when when are you gonna air this? We are going to air this whenever you want. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know whether I should talk about it, but um, fuck it. So I've just done a show. I've done a. Uh, huh. A series uh, just finished it and it's mm-hmm. going to be coming out on Hotstar very soon. Mm-hmm. So my most favorite episode from the show that I just did was an episode which was very similar to the uh... third episode of Last of Us. And <laughs> I know how much I fought for that episode. I fought so hard for that episode because only because of the, the the my show was about something else. The show mm-hmm. was about I can't really tell you about, but yeah. it was about something different. And I was taking a detour on mm-hmm. this one episode, on the fourth episode, I, I, uh, which has now become the fifth episode. Yeah. Uh, so I took a detour because I knew how important it was uh, in in my storytelling to to kind of delve more into this emotional arc of this one particular character and. I would be able to do that only if I take that detour and, and give them an entire journey of this one character. So mm-hmm. it, it was completely opposed by everyone, including my writers. And I was just fighting hard on that. I don't care about what the world says. It's it's for me, it's my most favorite episode of, yeah, of the yeah, right. same. When when I showed the the to a test audience, everybody picked that episode as the best. So that was like so much, I was so validated that at least, and still uh, a lot of people didn't believe in it. And then Last of Us came and Last of Us, the third episode came and I was like, this is what I was trying to do, fucker. I would have loved to see your live reaction while watching episode three. You'll be like, holy shit. No, <laughs> I was very happy and I was like, I hope somebody now talks about it. And guess what? The next phone call I was with everybody involved and they are talking to me. Yeah, you know, the last of us, the third episode. How it, I said, like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> guess what? I really like that episode and uh, I like the show a lot. And that, I, that episode particularly, I liked it a lot. And I was just uh, uh, happy, and I'm sure mine is nowhere close to what they did. Uh, but at least in spirit, in, in in theme, I was attempting something like that without knowing about it. Obviously, uh, when, when writing it when we were, and that that at least somewhere in the gut level, I was happy that I pursued something which <laughs> yeah. Worked. I hope now the episode works the way I wanted to. But um, yeah, so that 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 was pure validation for me when when that episode was loved by so many people. Lovely. Uh, lots of us. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, I guess uh, my my usual uh, favorites that I always recommend to people is, of course, The Crown, Barry, Extras. These are uh, office. Extras British. is? Oh, Extras is a British show by Ricky Gervais, mm-hmm. which he made immediately after The Office. So mm-hmm. It's an outstanding show. We've got two seasons. Uh, it's about... Ricky Chavez, who's a junior artist, basically, and oh. every episode, his his attempt is to try and get one dialogue in the film that he's shooting. And every episode has great uh, uh, special appearances, uh, mm-hmm. right from Kate Winslet, Ben Stiller, Samuel Jackson. Wow! So every episode has great actors coming in for each episode, and it's an outstanding show. So extra, nice. my one of my favorite shows. I keep it's a, this hidden gem. I think not many people talk about it. So extras Barry. Barry is my all-time favorite. Yeah, yeah I love Barry. I love, love Barry, and I, and I can't stop talking about Barry. I can't yeah. uh, stop gushing about Barry. I can't stop gushing about the fact that how Bill Hader, whom we all know as this comedian and a phenomenal writer and a comedian, right? Mm-hmm. How he, in the course of the show, apart from being a brilliant actor, he's a great actor, but he's got he's he's honed his directorial skills so beautifully that mm-hmm. in the last season you can see it's like a Masterclass in direction, like he's become yeah. a director 
uh, in the course of the show. Uh, Remember that motorcycle chase in yeah, season it's eight. Insane. It's outstanding, yeah. right? The motorcycle chase, and and to think of something like that, and to think of something like that is one thing, but to execute it so well, execute it so phenomenally. So again, yeah. I, 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 Hiro, in fact, Hiro Murai directed a couple of episodes in the first. Season. And Hiro Hiro Murai also did that voiceover. Like there is a person, a customer care for like detonating bombs, you know. <laughs> so that 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 voice was of Hiro Murai. I didn't know that. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, that that voice is done by Hiro Murai. Oh, can you please push that button so that? Voice... <laughs> And you know, there is this one scene, episode, right? yeah. <laughs> and there's this one brilliant scene in it, like these side scenes in Barry, like there is a, because I think Barry or someone goes into a wrong house and there are, there is a couple who is breaking up and the girl is saying, Hey, I want to break up with you because you have too many dogs. And in the background, you see so many dogs. So many dog. <laughs> Chasing Barry. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Dog. <laughs> Barry, dude, yeah. The last season is coming, I think, in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, again, I'm sad. I don't wanna, want it to get over. Better Call yeah. Saul. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm one of those rare people who thinks Better Call Saul is better than Breaking Bad. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> On Chalchitra talks, you are not like you. You do know our. Do you know our like uh, claim to fame of Better Call Saul? Like, do you know our story with that? No, no. Please, tell me. Oh, this is yeah. <laughs> we uh, yeah. So if you are a fan, you'll love it. So I used to consider myself one of the biggest fans of like uh, Better Call Saul. I watched it in 2019 and I wrote it on my whiteboard that for the 100th episode on the channel, I want to invite Peter Gold. And uh, then I sent a tweet to Peter Gold. And when I wrote, ki, hey, I run this YouTube channel and we, our 100th episode is coming in. This is in 2020. Would you like to come for this? Vagera? I asked all my friends to retweet and stuff. And for some weeks, nothing happened. But after one month, it Peter Gold followed me and he sent me a DM. Are you still interested in having me? If yes, this what? is my assistant's ID. And for the hundredth episode on our channel, our episode is with Mr. Peter Gold. What? Oh my yes. God, I have to watch that right now. And it's exactly like how we are talking. Recommendation, recommendation, recommendation. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, that would have been an epic uh, interaction. Yeah. That would have been that yeah, yeah, yeah. And to get everyone on the channel knew I'm a big Better Call Saul fan. So it was like a whole community victory. Like, hey, we did this. We actually did this. That's really cool. I'll, I'll definitely check it. I don't know how I missed that in your, in your list. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I think we should change the thumbnail and all. <laughs> <We should laughs> <put it. laughs> yeah. And that's the one episode we send it to everyone. Like, hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's like that thing. After that, at least in like Bombay and Aramnagar, everyone started calling us back <laughs> when they got. <laughs> ki, oh, okay, can we come on your channel now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and like, tell us about your like journey of Better Call Saul and why you like it so much. It just seamlessly kind of sucked me into it. Right from mm. season one, the bitterness that he had towards the brother, yet helping the brother, how that bitterness manifested and how they use that to kind of propel the story forward. I thought yeah, season yeah. one it kind of ended on a, such a good note and then it just built from it and built from it and introduced, introduced more and more characters and built their subplots. It just did it so seamlessly without jarring. I don't think I can even take out a single season saying, no, this was not as per. Every season, I think it just kept delivering, 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 and it just kept getting better and better and better. It was so rewarding. It was so rewarding. Uh, every, every episode, uh, and, and by the end of it, however sad I was, it was, it was such a rewarding watch. The investment that I had with each one of those characters and when each one of those characters, like when, 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 uh, spoiler here, but when Chuck died, it was, it was just heartbreaking. Right. Mm -hmm. And because you you kind of seen that journey, you've seen that journey and suddenly you see this character go. And you know that now it's not now it's not, not going to come back, and it had such a bittersweet. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so if you felt like one of your owners is gone, so I, I, I guess I was just way too emotionally invested by, by the third, fourth season, and and, and just kept going from there. And um, for me, it's one of the best things on television ever made. Like I don't think um, I, as much as I love The Crown, as much as I love Barry, I, lo I love all these shows for different different reasons, but. I think Better Call Saul just delivers on every front from from the writing to the acting to the, the execution, everything, which is outstanding. Yeah. And you know, you it's interesting how the first thing you mentioned about Better Call Saul was the brother relationship. So for yeah. me, as much as I like it, for me, the 
uh, way the show hit me before Chuck dying. Like the for me, the first three seasons are something else only because of the whole relationship between like Chuck and Saul, right? Chuck and Jimmy, because that is what made the show like very very special for me and then how they made everything land in season two episode five which was chicanery that like uh courtroom drama and everything drama. And like, holy shit. or that scene of him finally getting the brother like that yeah. is such a it's such a again bittersweet victory right it's he doesn't want to do it even the last thing he doesn't want to do it but he he can't stop himself and so ah. Yeah, Beautiful. yeah. Better Call Saul is one of those shows. Like, usually you cheer in a movie, like when, let's say, a particular character comes in or like you know a hero comes in. This is one of those shows where you cheered like if they recreated a particular frame, like from yeah. the episode Chickenery, uh, Chickenery. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. There's that frame which has the exit sign. Exit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in the last episode, they have you know recreated that frame, and oh. I, I was. <laughs> all throughout that man, they, <laughs> they really did it. and the last cameo in better call Saul is of Chuck right and like I was like when is Chuck coming when is they they gave us Walt they gave us Jesse I was waiting for the Chuck cameo because better call Saul is all about Jimmy and Chuck so when I saw him I'm like yeah they did the it last right. episode they brought him back no? mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 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 so I kind of wanted to show you something so I have a friend of mine from like uh, he's also a filmmaker he's actually his film uh, he made a film which went to Toronto Film Festival two years back. It's called Dug Dug. And like, uh, no one knows of him yet, but he's going to be one of the greatest things because no one knew of him and everyone is like, who is this guy whose film went to Toronto? <laughs> so he got this printer and like, I was at his place and I got all these posters from his place. So, oh, nice. and this is, this is her, this is burning, all the things I love. So I kind of like wanted to show you the Better Call Saul one. Like, yeah, so I got, I think two Better Call oh, Saul. nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, everything that I'm liking, Mad Men, Eyes Wide Shut, there are. This is Little Miss Sunshine, Succession, and all these. So yeah, I just wanted to show it for a second. <laughs> what are you building a scrapbook, or are you sticking them up somewhere? I want to do it like in like those photographic rooms where you just stick like like with hang those them. like hang them. Yeah, I kind of want clip to them. do that thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. clip them. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Better Call Saul we have talked about now. What next? What are the other TV shows? I think from the past, one of the earlier shows that really hit me hard was Tamas. Right. Uh, that was for its time. It was it was way too ahead for its time, and, and it was so hard hitting. I was too small to register that at that point, but then I revisited it many years later. Again, he's a filmmaker I absolutely adore. Govind Rani. He's someone I. Been heavily inspired by Harate Coach. That was yeah. Benegal. Hmm. That time they were shooting on film. They were shooting TV shows on film and all hmm. that. So nicely done for its time. So uh, I, I guess we have not really staged and done shows in that level. Last 20, 30 years, TV is not <laughs> not really given us anything other than CID, I guess. So it's <laughs> not really something we we'll look forward to. But of course, with the digital um, invasion. We have managed to crack some great shows here, be it um, Sacred Games, Made in Heaven, Family Man. There are very, very good shows and now Rocket Boys. And there are so many shows being made, but some of them really stick out because of, purely because of the writing and the execution and all. And uh, we are also kind of pushing the bar. So uh, and, and and it's given a lot of opportunities to filmmakers and to writers who are just getting stuck doing uh, trying to hit the Bollywood game and trying to you know, uh, make it into the uh, the star system, star system, and they just broke away from that and got heavily into uh, digital in a big way and became. I know a lot of writers have become filmmakers, now. so mm-hmm. um, definitely um, a, a lot more exciting content is up there right now. South uh, has not yet caught on to the show mm-hmm. format; it's yet to find its footing. And there are shows. But it's not yet uh, hit a big one yet. But otherwise, other than this, yeah, um, I guess I named almost. almost yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the genres I particularly like in shows is when someone plays themselves, and particularly a lot of comedians do that. Let's say mm-hmm. Seinfeld or Rami or Louis and all these. So, are there any shows where you saw someone playing themselves and like in a semi autobiographical way? Like, I really like the Aziz Ansari's Master of None, where, which is somewhat it's like so good, right? Master of None. So, good. I really liked Master of None both seasons. 
Yeah. The third film suddenly took a detour. It became a different thing altogether. Yeah. It was good. I found it interesting. Yeah. But uh, in comparison, it wasn't as good as yeah. the other. Agreed. Agreed. I guess they should have prepped us a bit more on the third season. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Very true. Very true. And people yeah. felt cheated. They felt yeah. cheated. I felt cheated too because I, yeah. I was waiting for something to click into, but it didn't. It, it became a totally different animal. Yeah, 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 yeah. They did that with this show also, which I quite liked. Uh, the Netflix show. This two teenagers on the run. Two teenagers on the run. I think yeah. I've seen this week. Uh, something something uh, they didn't give a fuck about or something like that. something something all the fucking something something i don't know i'm i'm, I'm, I'm missing the name acha ye uh, fucking uh, there is i think the word is fucking in it now <laughs> should we keep this or it will be so hilarious <laughs> in the <body. laughs> it's got fucking in it not literally but it's got it in the title <laughs> but they did the same the first season was had a great flavor and something very good going for it and second season they just completely went like a detour uh it was good on its own but it was not a good follow up the end they, of the fucking good the end of the fucking good yeah. yeah. there is a subreddit called tip of the tug where you just go and type all these things and they'll tell you you were looking for this show <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah comfort watch for me which is uh, yeah uh, apart from the office office you can watch any time comfort watch for me is everybody loves rain i am a mm-hmm. huge everybody loves raymond fan everybody mm-hmm. watches friends right friends mm-hmm. of course we all seen it millions of times but for me it's everybody loves raymond everybody loves him i can just i i it's like a carousel for me i can just keep watching it again and again and again and again and i i know the dialogues i'll still watch it again and again and again so that's like a comfort nice. there's nothing else i'll watch that now if you watch it it might not work for you right ah okay it's that okay. old sitcom format with uh, Fair enough. with the uh, recorded laughter and all that so i don't know if it works now for people because i try and show it to people now nobody likes it i love it <laughs> because i i know the characters i know them so well i feel it just works for me even now got it yeah have you watched the indian adaptation of everybody loves raymond i didn't even try <laughs> <laughs> which is which is uh, which is uh, sumit samandega it used to air on oh. i think sub tv yeah I didn't even want to. I told about some friends involved in it, but I was like, "Nay, nay, 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 dekh." Ah, nice. And so, also, you mentioned the Office. So, the Office UK or the US version? I'm a huge fan of the original. I I watched mm-hmm. Office when it came out, so I, mm-hmm. I love it from then. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was completely against the American version. But mm-hmm. the American version just won me over, yeah, because it just kept. <laughs> doing so much more because yeah. the, the british office was only two seasons and they yeah. had one christmas special but the american office just kept adding on more and more and more and more and, and i think it just really surpassed i felt I and mean, it's fantastic steve carell and the entire gang is fantastic nice nice i think now we can also talk about and bring in movies and yeah. like uh, uh movies is a very vast genre so how should we start like i i kind of have one one segment right so hindol like uh, when i met him last like as a chalchitra team we gifted him something on his birthday he has this frame we kind of like planned this one hindol can you sh- show uh, sir the frame that like we have <laughs> this is this is the oh wow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah picture. and Yeah, we all know that you work very closely with Mani Ratnam, sir. Which is your favorite Mani Ratnam movie? Iruvar. Nice. Iruvar is my all-time favorite. I think it's mm-hmm. everything. Uh, performances, uh, the writing, the execution, the cinematography, music, everything. This is like it's a it's a for me it's a textbook. I can keep mm-hmm. watching it to learn. So whenever I'm completely feeling uninspired, I just play Iruvar and I. Wow! Ready to get back. Ready to wow! Charge. And, and which is your favorite uh, album, like from all his uh, films? Ah, it's too difficult to choose. Yeah. So many <laughs> al- great albums. So I many. Dil Se is such a great album. Tere Dil Dil is such a great album. Dalapati is a good album. So too many albums that I can't pick one. I think Dil Se definitely was one of the most favorite. I guess. Got it. So, in general, also let's talk more about movies. Which are some of your biggest influences in general when it comes to films? Mani sir, of course, Mani sir's filmography. Padmarajan. I think every Malayalam filmmaker owes something to Padmarajan. I feel uh, today's generation of filmmakers, Malayalam filmmakers, we all have kind of 
been heavily influenced by Padmarajan. So Mani sir, Padmarajan, Govind Nalani, hmm. uh, Ketan Mehta. These hmm. are the films that I have grown up watching and I have aspired to be like. Uh, at one point, of course, Ram Gopal Verma was a huge influence. Hmm. So was Mukul Anand. Mukul Anand for his mm-hmm. style of filmmaking. He he was the OG in style. Uh, hmm. That time, nobody did style. They all had a very formula, cardboard cutout way of filmmaking. And Mukul Anand just broke that and showed them hmm. what it could be like. So he was, uh, it was, he had a very, very, uh, distinctive style of filmmaking. He's been a great influence. In fact, I, my, the first person I approached wanting to assist was Mukulana. Wow. But I never got a chance, never got an interview or uh, call. Also. So yeah, these are the filmmakers I've grown up watching. These are the filmmakers I um, I can add some more. I, uh, there is Bharatan, there is Ivy Shashi, there is Bharti Raja, there is Balu Mahindra. These are all filmmakers whose films really grounded me, really uh, made me understand at a time when being in Bombay, the kind of uh, Bollywood films that were being made were not really something to get inspired by, were not really something that you uh, uh, you got excited by. Maybe one and two, three years, one good film would come out. But otherwise, they were, I grew up at a time when it was not great filmmaking that was happening then, uh, in, in Bollywood at least. Uh, so it, it, it was going through this really tragic <laughs> curve of films being made. I'm talking about the late 80s, early 90s. It was just mm. terrible films being made. And at that time, these filmmakers were pushing the envelope and making some phenomenal films. They're all most of the filmmakers that I mentioned are all in the South. Mm-hmm. And they were just killing it. They were just making outstanding films. I'm talking about uh, even Manisa. Manisa made Nayagan, made Agni Nakshatram. Made Dalapati, all that in the late 80s, early 90s, now Anjali. So, same for uh, Padmarajan. Padmarajan. Now, Padmarajan, I don't know if you know of Padmarajan. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have not seen his films, the ideas that he was uh, experimenting with, the things that he was trying to do, were even today, and I'm talking about 80s, huh? even today when you watch it, they were way ahead of its time. The kind of stuff he was doing was way ahead. Uh, and and very, very bold and, you know, very, very uh, out there ideas he was attempting and, mm. and, and and doing it with Panash, doing it with the biggest stars. The biggest stars were working with him and experimenting like crazy. Mm. And so he was not always successful, but he managed to bridge that. He managed to bridge some really out there experimental art house ideas and made it Commercial also because they had the stars working. The biggest stars, be it Mohanlal, Mamuti, all the biggest stars were working with him, and uh, uh, he was knocking it out of the park with his films. With each each film, were like bolder than the others. It was so out there. Mm. I think I have done an entire podcast on his on his ah. photography and all films that some of the some of the favorites that I, I there are too many that are. Favorites of mine. Some of them are just iconic, iconic in what he was trying to do. Most of them are available on Hotstar. Mm-hmm. It's a try and watch if you can. Uh, his films are is they are really really something else. He was a phenomenal writer. So he was a, he used to write for other filmmakers also. So he was a very good writer and a very interesting filmmaker. Like one of his films, for instance, is about this guy. He's come from a village and he's come to the city to for a job, and he keeps getting mistaken for someone else. And he keeps getting into trouble because this other guy who looks like him is up to no good. Mm-hmm. And this guy keeps getting fucked because of that. <laughs> so check this out. So it's a, it's actually a double role film, right? It's a, it's yeah. a simple trope. You have seen this before. You've seen a trope like this where mistaken identity and this guy. But what Padmarajan does with it is the entire film, he never shows you the other guy. Oh, Ooh. lovely, lovely, lovely. Good so you stuff. never see the other guy. You only see it from this guy's perspective. And you only mm. see it that this guy is just getting fucked and what he's trying to do. Mm. So now lovely. that is, that's what I meant. It's so bold. It's so bold to experiment with an idea like that, but still not take you where you think it was going to go. So mm. that, that's what he used to do. With every film he did that. His ideas were just very, very, very out there. Very cool. I, I loved, I loved his films. What are some of his films that, you know, we should start uh, discovering him from 
Tuvana Tumbigal. Tuvana Tumbigal is one of his most uh, discussed films, one of his most uh, uh, widely appreciated discussed films. Tuvana Tumbigal. I'll send you a list if you want. Tuvana Tumbigal is a very, very cool film. I put up a tweet on Tuvana Tumbigal. How the ending of Tuvana Tumbigal, I'm not spoiling it, don't worry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the same year, same year, Ijazat came out. Gurdjian okay. Ijazat came out. Mm-hmm. And they both had the same ending, same setting, same, everything same. Mm-hmm. Fuck, how did that happen? You know? They Please. both had the exact same ending. Mm-hmm. Happens at the train station, happens, the, 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 the setting, everything was the same, mm-hmm. which is quite bizarre. So I was trying to find out which came first. <laughs> I couldn't uh... figure out. <laughs> But uh, very, very, very cool song. Tuvan Tumbigal. Innale is another favorite of mine. Innale means yesterday. Innale, mm-hmm. um, this woman who's just forgotten everything. She's uh, lost her memory from a bus accident mm-hmm. and nobody's come to claim her. So she doesn't know where to go. So it's right. a woman who's lost her memory and the doctor who's trying to uh, uh, get her close to her family. The doctor who kind of falls in love with her. It's very, very mm-hmm. beautiful film. So in the lay, Tuvana Tumbigal, there are many more. His last film, where he kind of uh, died before it's released, something had an, um, Nitesh Bharadwaj, the the Lord Krishna from Mahabharat. Mahabharat yeah. He acted mm-hmm. in a last film. I don't like that film so much, mm-hmm. but again, um, because I think uh, posthumously that film was celebrating and discussed now. But um, that was his last film. Just like for my knowledge, when was the last film released? Like when did he make it? I think it was uh, mid nineties. That was the last mid time. Mid nineties is when got it. Uh, and uh, we would also love to know about your influences outside of India. Growing up years, uh, we were all only hooked onto the classics. I mean, we had access only to the classics. Uh, be it our video libraries or be it uh, uh, a laser disc library and then DVD library. The DVD mm-hmm. library, then of course, you had more. But during the VHS phase, it was only uh, we used to only go looking for Jackie Chan movies. We used to go mm-hmm. looking for Godfather. We used to go looking for the Indiana Jones. You know what I mean? We used to go looking only for the classics. Um, then with college and with getting access to more and more uh, films through through DVD libraries and then of course torrents. And uh, <laughs> streaming platforms, you had access to way, way more filmmakers. And one of the filmmakers I, I kind of discovered and then became a huge uh, fan of is Andrea. Andrea Arnold is one filmmaker I absolutely like. Again, so unique, so distinctive, and and uh, again, very less talked about. I think she's a very special filmmaker. So I really like her work. Noah Bombach. I have been following his work from Squid in the Whale Line. His work yeah. I really like. Dennis Villeneuve, again, I think incendies just changed my life. Uh, for me, wow. it was like an you know, earth shattering experience for me. Like I couldn't yeah. leave that film like for years after I watched that. It just cleared my head for years. I love PTA, but I also don't like PTA. So then I have my PTA phases. But so, tell me why you don't, it's very interesting. Why don't you like him? I feel sometimes in his storytelling, there is there was some indulgence which I used to love. Mm. There, there was indulgence which, like Punch Drunk Love, is I feel is abstract and pure indulgence at one point, and I enjoyed it. You know, I, I had a ball watching Punch Drunk Love. I had a ball watching There Will Be Blood. For me, almost like a return to form was Phantom Thread. You know, uh, mm. a master. As much people love it. I didn't get taken into it. I uh, that, I disconnected. I I had uh, some issues with the master. Um, so I guess that's why I meant I, I have these. And and how did you? I I don't know how to pronounce it. The pizza one, the licorice, the lic- licorice uh-huh. pizza. Yeah, I've actually not seen it. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it. Haven't. <laughs> yeah, so, um, it was in the last year's race, Oscar race. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't watch it. Though I heard it's a follow-up to another film or something like that, right? It's a throwback or ah. a follow-up. It had a very mm-hmm. dazed and confused like look to yeah. it, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Something didn't appeal me to it, but uh, anyway, I'll, I'll get down to watching it at some point. Any I, particular I, films I, that you would like to talk about? There are these three, four films I recommend to everyone that they should watch. Incendies, The Hunt, the Danish film. The oh, Hunt. love it. 
Love it. Look at their collaboration. They made Hunt, they made another, another round. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they are phenomenal together. You know? they, they both are just phenomenal yeah. together. He's an actor par excellence and that guy, is, the director is unreal. So, uh, Incendies, The Hunt, Jacques Audiard, now that's another director I absolutely love. Uh, Ooh, sorry, I don't know. Jacques Audiard made uh, Profit, made uh, this one film which I absolutely, absolutely adore. Uh, it's called The Beat That Skipped My Heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've not seen it, please watch it. It's like oh. a class in, uh, a character study. The Beat That Skipped My Heart. So he's done Read My Lips, Beat That Skipped My Heart. He's done um, uh, Flesh and Bone. And he recently did a film called Deepen, which is about a... Uh, he did a Sri French Lankan, film. Uh, Lankan uh, Lankan I mean, yeah, I've seen that one, yeah. So good. So, so, so good. I really liked. So he's one filmmaker I really like. And uh, his, that one show, The Beat That Skipped My Heart and Profit are like classics for me. Uh, again, I, I rewatch them a lot. I, I recommend them a lot. Then uh, there is the, the the Secret in Their Eyes. That's another film I really like. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the Secret in Their Eyes. It is by? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't watch the Hollywood version. Watch the original. The yeah, 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 the secret in their eyes. Yeah. Wild Tales, that's another from my like yeah. anthology. Yeah. These are films I really, really uh, watch, rewatch, recommend all the time. Nice. Profit and the B, well, I'll have to see. Yeah. I have seen the others. These two are the ones I'll see. Nice. Are there any documentaries you want to talk about or recommend? I don't follow documentaries so much as much as I should. I think because of Netflix and because of all this, I've started watching them more. The one that really stayed with me, I really liked was that the Wild Wild Country. Right. Mm. I really like that one. Though right now I'm watching this thing about the Pawn Hub, uh, uh, which is just dropped on Netflix. It's a documentary. Mm. Uh, the industry is like a mega billion dollar industry and, and how it uh, can fun. Watching that. But yeah, documentaries, uh, I've yet to watch Elephant Whispers. I've not seen it. Though so many of my friends are involved in it, but I've not seen it. I've yet to watch it. Got Since you uh, recommended a lot of films from the outside as well, and could you recommend some Indian films? Because the reason why I'm asking this is because a lot of people haven't seen like the classics or let's say films from the South. So what would be a good entry point uh, for those films be? I think Padmarajan's filmography, Bharatan. Uh, director Bharatan's filmography. If you just look them up, you'll find them on Hotstar or on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them I mentioned, of course. One is Indale, one is Tuwana Tumbigal. Then um, uh, Bharatan's, of course, Vaishali. There's a film called Vaishali. Mm-hmm. They are classics. Um, so these are films I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, if someone wants to rewatch classics from Malayalam cinema, we have films that they can watch for sure. Recently, I was uh, I was telling a friend about um, Milch Masala. Mm-hmm. And you can find mm-hmm. that over there on YouTube. So mm-hmm. Ketan Prav, Milch Masala, with subtitles on available on YouTube, please watch them. People who have not seen it. Mm-hmm. Those are films that, that really changed our view of what filmmaking should be like. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it just changed our perception on films altogether. It just blew our heads off. So um, these are classics that one should watch. Very uh, much Bhumika. Mm-hmm. Uh, Govind Milani's Arthi Satya, of course. Droka. Mm-hmm. Films that uh, again, it's on loop watch for me. I, I make it a point I watch once a year. Radha Satya, Drokal, Nishant, Sai Paraj Pai's films are like my all time mm. favorite. Kanha, Krishna Bhattu, these are the things I keep watching. Yeah. watching. I, I mentioned once in a tweet or something that if you ever wanted to inhabit a world of a film, which film would it be in? My wow. immediate answer was Katha and Krishna Bhattu. Like, I want to be wow. <laughs> I, I want to. <laughs> I, I have this yeah katha ke saath ye mera bhi hai, yeah. the universe is so yeah, so, yeah. I, I i can't even begin to tell you how much uh it influenced uh me when i was growing up and uh when i was about to move out of my house and find a place of my own in bombay uh katha was my reference point i wanted to stay in a locality like katha uh, so I, I literally i'm not kidding i used to look out for places which are similar to the katha was <laughs> like how that that chal was so iconic in my head and in my head mm-hmm. was like i wanted to be in a place like that. i wanted to be around people like that lovely lovely mm-hmm. lovely 
Yeah. So now I think we can move towards the yeah. book section. Like, do you have any book recommendations for us? You no, know, I keep I keep reading some Simon books. I keep forgetting them. I was given a very interesting book uh, by Manisha. Manisha gave me a book. Um, if you give me a second, I'll get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please. Please. If I'm not mistaken, wait, hold on. So this is the book that Manisha gave me, and this was such an interesting book. It's a conversation with the conversation by Walter Murch, the editor. It's art of editing. Mm. It's got Manisa's name sticker written. <laughs> so he gave it to me and he said, "Read it. You like it." And I said, "Thank you so much." Sir. And uh, as I was walking away, he said, "I want it back." And I said, <laughs> 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 "I said, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'll give it back. Never give it back. It's still with me." <laughs> <laughs> so that this is uh, something I keep uh, going back to. Uh, also because you know I read a lot about films that I love. Mm-hmm. Uh, be it the making of it or be it the filmmakers talking about it, be it the, the technicians talking about it. I love reading about that. Uh, so this I particularly enjoyed only because he's, he's talking about classics, he's talking about Godfather, he's talking about uh, the conversation, he's talking about the English patient. Which, um, and these are films that he edited and, and the construct of, of how the collaboration worked with the director, what how it uh, eventually became the scene that you enjoy so much. For me, that is um, like I love to know about that process. Now with Manisha, for instance, when I'm working with him, I'm I'm getting direct access to the construct. I'm seeing him translate what is on paper onto screen in real time. I'm seeing that happen, right? So f- for me, I'm, I'm part of the process. But I would have loved to be part of that process from his earlier films also. Like so many of his films that I've grown up, grown up watching, and I absolutely like, Iruvar. If I was part of, I I, I wish. I knew how he did that particular scene. What, what was the thought behind that scene? How he constructed that scene? That's something I keep ribbing him on. I keep oh. whenever I have that one to one, I keep asking him so I can get this trivia about certain things and mm-hmm. certain sequences and all that. So uh, I guess that's what made me made him give this to me also because this has that. This is a very interesting book because it dis- discusses uh, uh, those 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 iconic moments in films and how it came about, how it was shot, and how it actually eventually translated to be. So those are things that I love reading. Uh, mm-hmm. Not just here, yeah, but even on the blogs, be it uh, the making of. A lot of the making of films, I, I, I kind of, I devour them. Especially mm-hmm. the films that I love. Uh, I, I devour them. And I, I, I try and follow the technicians who are part of that film. Also, I, I follow them. I, I try and read up their interviews, their podcasts. So, and podcasts also for some strange reason, I like to read rather than listen. I'm mm-hmm. one of those wow. I like to read. So, uh, those are things I, I usually read a lot. Uh, other than that, it takes me a long time to, uh, uh, my, my, because of my ADHD, I guess, I, I take a long time to finish a book. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I prefer uh, short stories, I prefer anthologies, I prefer novellas. You know, those are things I, I kind of read a lot. Like I, I, I've been stuck on this Pulitzer prize winning book called All That Man Is. I think I've been reading it for like two years now. <laughs> I reading and then go back to the beginning again and start reading it. So, but uh, there's a book called, I mean, famous, very famous book called uh, Silk. That's, a, uh, it's a that, that's something I've read it twice, but I, I like to revisit it again. It's something, it's, it's so visceral and it's storytelling. Wow. That's something I, I like. Again, I think that's something I enjoy. I enjoy books which have a very unique style in, in, in the writing, which 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 mm-hmm. almost transports you there. I, I, I enjoy writing like that. So nice. those are the things that I, I like to do. Though I wish I read more than I do currently. I, I spend most of my time uh, uh, reading scripts than books. So uh, and some terrible scripts I read. So <laughs> I wish I read better. Oh. Which is why I, I look forward to when someone tells me to read a book and I get excited when, when someone really highly recommends a book. And so I, I quickly go and buy them, but then it takes me a long time to get through. Like I recently, I've been, I've been told to read IQ 184. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Murakami, Murakami. Right. Murakami IQ 184. And the person who recommended it to me described it so beautifully to me that I, I was just transported. So I was like, I can't wait to. You know, like two things I wanted to uh, say, because once you were saying ki, uh, I get very excited when people recommend you books, I was about to recommend you a Burakami book, which is, it is a different one. It's called Kafka on the show. I oh, think you'll, I've heard a lot about it. 
Not yeah, but I think particularly you like understanding your taste and like the universe Murakami presence in that. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. And the other point I was because you showed us this book. I have read the other Walter Murch book, which is the In the Blink of an Eye. Like, ah. yeah, yeah, that's the one I have read. Yeah, maybe I should get down to that now because I've I've finished this like twice already. <laughs> ah, lovely. Do you like yeah. reading books on films? Like, is that a genre yeah. that you like? Nice. Yeah, I think especially like I said, of films that I like, mm-hmm. films that I, I I really enjoy. Those are films I I love to read more about. I love to read more about filmmakers. So mm-hmm. there are a lot of biographies of filmmakers that I like to read. Which 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 ones? Which ones? ones, uh, uh, But most of them are like you know like um, like recently I read this the uh, have you read that Blood Sweat and Chrome, Uh, the Mad Max Fury Road uh, the making of the Mad Max Fury Road book oh it's an outstanding book please please if you if you like the film read the book it's an outstanding book it's the madness that went into making uh, Mm -hmm. Mad Max Fury Road so it was again recommended by a friend of mine uh, Danish who recommended to me. And he couldn't he couldn't stop raving about it to me. And then he kept giving me all the details of the book. And I'm like, wait, 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 I want let me read, let me read. <laughs> and I uh, that was that was one of the recent books that I read, which just blew me away. On the subject of reading, I had one last recommendation. Do you like to read screenplays in general, like of classic movies or yeah. movies that you really like? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, that also I collect. Oh, mm-hmm. Again, of films uh, that uh, that I really like. LA, I, I was working with Hyde Park. Mm-hmm. Ashoka Prithat's company for four four to five months I worked there and my job there was to read scripts and like in a day I had to read at least three to four screenplays and write a note on them and you know uh, so I had to write a note on them and then pass to the next person in line in the office so there's still like a stack of scripts every day and to just devour them and some of them used to come with a tag saying that these are hot scripts. A lot of studios are already looking at it and optioning it. So I remember reading Hangover. Can you imagine Hangover was not made at that time? But wow. That was there. And one day uh, I go to office and right on top of the pile, I see a screenplay of Inglorious Bastards. Oh. And it had, if you Google it, you'll see it had a cover page which was handwritten by Tarantino and that title page was uh, handwritten and then Xerox and put on to the, right. the, the cover page. So I saw that I was like, holy shit, uh, <laughs> I couldn't wait. But then I got so excited. Uh, so you're not allowed to take the script outside the office. You're not allowed. Okay. So I took the script, went to, to the, the cubicle to read and lunch break. I stuffed the script into my pants. I went down for my lunch break. I, I walked some three blocks ahead. I Xeroxed wow. the script. <laughs> I Xeroxed and made like some six copies. Went to my room, kept it there, came back and started reading it. And I couldn't wait to, the moment I came back to India, I, I went and gave it to some filmmaker friends of mine and, and showed it to them and I gave it to them. And I was so excited because it's not made. The film has not been made. Mm. And you know that it's going to be made. And you had the next Quentin Tarantino script. Man. And it had a cow which is handed by them. So it was, for me, it was like one very high point in my... <laughs> at that point, uh, my filmmaking had not yet started. But for me, as a, as a, as a fanboy, I, it was like a huge thing. So one of, the, one of the... Again, one of the best screenplays I'd read. And mm. the screenplay was way... Actually, way more descriptive, way better than the actual film. The film was good, but the screenplay was better. So I do read screenplays. I do read a lot of screenplays uh, of films that I like. So you have six copies of the Lighthorn, you have to give us a child to give us. One. Great, great, great. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, I think like we have got some amazing recommendations and this was like a wonderful, wonderful episode. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to talk about? Hey, we didn't discuss this. I have some recommendations. It can be in regard to anything apart from movies, books, music also. Like I'll tell you, like I asked this one question to all my guests. Uh, a purchase you did for less than 10,000 rupees that was worth it. Like, hey, everyone should... (laughs) 
buy this thing or get this i mean idiot i keep buying headphones i keep buying uh, ears <laughs> ear plugs ear phones in the airports all the time now i've stopped otherwise every time i just keep buying because it's the same thing you can't listen to it and buy you have to buy it and then try it out no? and i'm uh, very particular about sound i like sound mm-hmm. certainly so um like i recently purchased this this is like a chinese make of a nice old radio with an antenna and all that mm-hmm. and thanks to this uh i listen to vivid bharti almost every day now so wow. i now we listen to radio and we listen to all the 93.5 and even all the hi fi channels while driving mm-hmm. but i have not been listening to vivid bharti in a long time so thanks mm-hmm. to this now i listen to vivid bharti a lot mm-hmm. and they play such amazing old classics so mm-hmm. this is what again i think it was 3000 rupees by and it wow. looks like an nice old radio but is a fab purchase i i i would highly recommend <laughs> <laughs> this is of course that uh, uh, Taregama came up with this other thing, right? Uh, which everybody has now. Karma. Uh, Karma. I think again, mm. that's a normal mm. purchase too. Right? Uh, like database of such interesting songs. Though I don't know how Karma works. You can't really select a song if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's uh, it just plays on its own. Yeah, so that I'm not a big fan of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, um, yeah, I, as a music fan, I guess I keep looking up a stuff like that. In fact. I remember when I when I was doing up my house, I always wanted to get a jukebox, mm-hmm. uh, the old classic jukeboxes. Um, but I never got down to buying one uh, because the one I finally found one was just taking up too much space. <laughs> yeah. Plus, you have a very good viewing room also because I, I've seen Tesh there, right? Like I remember the whole setup you have done there. Uh, yeah. So I am in my viewing room now. So that viewing room has ah. changed. A different apartment now, but yeah, this is my viewing room. This is where I ninety nine percent of the time I'm here. So uh, then. <laughs> <laughs> lovely you mentioned that you buy a lot of headphones like you used to buy a lot of headphones so uh, i have this so which is i'm asking you do uh, you have a particular song that you go uh, and play like when you have to test the headphones oh yeah is, such a good question so yeah. oh, i have a playlist to okay. test <laughs> so this is my testing playlist okay <laughs> so it's not one track there are a couple of tracks i play mm-hmm. because one track is not enough i need right. to play four five tracks to make sure Mm-hmm. very nice right uh and recently when i've been doing that uh i've been actually only playing the theme for my next film mm. uh so that theme is something uh that's become my asset test that that theme i've had that theme almost 2 years now so mm-hmm. that theme is something i keep playing to keep checking but other than that i have a playlist of tracks nice. which i keep uh, listening to to make sure it's got a uh, the, the sound is right my go to song is ye hasi vadiya pudu velle made from roza okay. and uh, there's this channel so like how web of give you your rec- a recommendation this is my recommendation to you because i think you will really like it there's this youtube channel called the mastering project so what he does is he takes a lot of old uh, tamil songs uh, hindi songs and he remasters them for like wow. our uh, listening experience so he has i think he's done a lot of ar rahman's uh discography so like whenever i have to like test my headphones or like wow. just listen to something nice i go to the channel and i select uh, the tracks from how oh, cool yeah lovely lovely <laughs> lovely this is amazing and thank you so much sir for doing this i'm um, th- like i hope aapko maza aaya ki episode thoda lamba ho gaya hume but we were getting such great recommendation <laughs> um, and thank you for that show sure. please watch like and subscribe to chalachitra talkies for some amazing content Hi guys so I hoped you liked our episode with Bijoy and Amiel and now I have a movie recommendation for you movie pe ek film hai jiska naam hai Coffee and Cigarettes jisko banaya Jim Jarmusch ne ये इतनी बेहतरीन मूवी है मेरा कॉलेज टाइम से मैंने इसका एक पोस्टर निकाल रखा है जो मैं आप लोगों को दिखाना चाहता हूँ लाइक दिस इज़ अ फ्रेम आई गॉट मेड ड्यूरिंग माय कॉलेज इयर्स जिम जारमोश एज अ फिल्म मेकर हैज़ आल्सो शेप्ड अ लॉट ऑफ माय पर्सनालिटी बिकॉज ऑफ हिम एज अ स्टोरी टेलर आई गॉट रियली इन टू कॉफिटेबल कन्वर्जेशन वे आर पीपल आर टॉकिंग टू ईच अदर वे आर यू आर नॉट कंसर्न अबाउट द बिगर प्लॉट और आप अपनी राइटिंग इम्प्रूव कर रहे हो बस दो लोगों को किसी एक नीच टॉपिक के बारे में बात करते हुए देख के and this is what coffee and cigarettes the movie is about there are 11 short films in this and every short film has very different conversations with a cup of coffee and some cigarettes like in one short film you'll get to see kate blanchett and in another short film you'll get to see meg white and jack white who make the band the white stripes fir aapko ek short film mein dikhai denge bill mare then in one short film you'll get to see steve buscemi 
इसकी बहुत ही खतरनाक स्टार कास्ट है एंड uh, बहुत ही सेल्फ इंडल्जेंट कन्वर्जेशन आई हैं एंड दैट इज वॉट मेक्स इट यूनिक बिकॉज यू सी पीपल वेन दे आर नॉट कॉन्शियस जब कॉफी पी हुई है कैफी नेट उन्हें मिला हुआ है लाइक देर इज वन ऑफ द डायलॉग्स फ्रॉम कॉफी एंड सिगरेट्स वेयर पर्सन से आई ड्रिंक अ लॉट ऑफ कॉफी बिफोर गोइंग टू स्लीप सो दैट आई कैन ड्रीम फास्ट सो ऐसे लोग बड़े अपने मन में ही ऐसे जो चीज़ें सोचते हैं उसका आउटलाउट बोल रहे हैं टू दी अदर पर्सन सेटिंग ओवर द कॉफी टेबल आई गेट वेरी एक्साइटेड वेन आई टॉक अबाउट दिस फिल्म एंड आई वुड हाईली हाईली रिकमेंड दैट यू गो एंड वॉच कॉफी and cigarettes on movie and uh, do tell me how you like it guys bahut dil ke kareeb hai ye film mere so keep watching the channel and if you have watched the video till here apne aap ko comments mein reveal kijiye using the hashtag कूल 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 आपको तीन बार कूल cool लिखना है ठीक है एंड इट विल बी नाइस टू सी कितने लोग यहाँ तक वीडियो देखते हैं अमेजिंग गाइज आई विल सी यू सुन बाय